Alright, this is uh, my little Ender 3. And you can see here that the, uh, the first layer of this uh, small hexagon shape is going down. Um, you can see there there's no gaps or, or missing filament or anything like that. It might be hard to, to see in this lighting. Let's see if we can block part of it. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there in that first layer. It's finishing up. You can see it's nice and smooth. Uh, there's no filament missing or gaps or anything like that. It's currently on its second layer as we speak. Um, and so there's, uh, like I say, kind of like full disclosure uh, about the printer. Uh, you can see here this printer has the uh, standard uh, run-of-the-mill hot end. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, there's no direct drive or any kind of electronic gizmo here to level the bed. It's literally the most limited amount of what's needed to put filament onto the table. So we have our Bowden tube. This is the filament delivery setup to a moving head. Okay, so this is the x-axis. So in order to get the filament from over there to over here, it uses the Bowden setup. It's a Bowden tube. So the filament literally uh, comes off the holder right here, and it is being pulled with the extruder. So not only is this extruder pulling the filament, but it's pushing the filament. So pulling and pushing all the way down here to the hot end. So right here is a heat sink, right? In the center of this is a heat sink that is being cooled by this fan. Okay, it's constantly cooling the filament that's going into the nozzle, which is heated down here in a heat block. So in order for this filament right here between the entrance into the hot end, into the, the printhead, to the exit, it needs to remain uh, rigid. So if the filament starts to get soft before it gets here, then that could cause clogging. And they will essentially cause that uh, heat creep because maybe the fan has slowed down. It's not cooling as efficiently as it used to when it was new. So basically, once the filament gets pushed down the Bowden tube into the hot end, down the heat sink, it is then melted. It's, it's become soft. And in this particular case, the uh, temperature uh, of the uh, of the hot end right here is 210. You can see it's 210. This little indicator here says whether it's heating or co cooling. Right now it's in the off state. So when it has to maintain the temperature, it will turn on, it will go white, and then that means it's heating. So right now it's, it's off. So no heat is, or temperature is required. So it just literally is holding at 210 right now. We look at the bed, and that's kind of unusual right here for any printer, any printer that most people are familiar with, but this is a hot, uh, unheated bed. I've never heated the bed, never needed to heat the bed, never will heat the bed. Okay, so I'm currently printing PLA, and for a second there, you saw the nozzle come on for just a brief second. That means for just a minute, just a second or two, it's uh, it was heating. Okay, it's back off. So this, see right there, you can see it heats, okay? So this maintains the heat at 210, that's my set point. Uh, also, again, the, the bed is non-heated. The set point is at zero, meaning that we don't want to heat the bed. So it's currently at room temperature. 31 Celsius is, is, is room temperature. This is me measured in Celsius. Okay, so we look at the rest of it here. Um, we have it at 33% on the cooling fan, that's right there. And this fan doesn't go to 100% until a couple layers up. And right now we're basically looks like we're on our second layer. So let's go over here real quick and take a look at that. Okay, you can see it's on the second layer. And again, there's no gaps or anything, no you know bumps or thumps or anything like that. It's literally as smooth as a baby's end, as a as an example. So we're going to come around over here, and again. As full disclosure of what my printer is set up like, you see it's just your basic hot end. We've got no added weight or gizmos or anything on here to deliver the filament to the hot end because the Bowden tube is designed to remove the weight from the hot end to over here. Get it off 
the uh, X drive because if you had all this extra weight on here, that means the, the stepper motor is struggling and it's going to fight to, to, you know, to do the, the smaller motions because if, if it's just moving at, at larger motions, no fast movement, then that will, will be less likely to have a problem. But if you're if you're moving at small little increments like da -da 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 -da, then having weight up here is going to be a problem because you can't stop gravity. Essentially, momentum will cause the the hot uh, the uh, added extruder weight, which again is that stepper motor as well as the extruder all piled up on top. To me, that that is that just is not logical. So for other people, it tends. I guess they they like what it does. Uh, I don't have to deal with it uh, because again, I'm using PLA. I'm not using TPU or I'm not using anything that requires direct drive. So this works for me as it always has for well over three and a half years. And again, no electronic gizmo here to help me level the bed. I don't need the help. I I, I know how to level the bed, and I use the tramming. Uh, method. This is the old school paper feeler gauge and they call it a feeler gauge for a reason because you need to feel how much tension or how much how much friction is on the nozzle between the nozzle and the print surface itself. In this case you see it's I, I, the print surface isn't the glass, it's not the mirror. Um, the mirror has its own purpose because it's flat. That is one positive uh, reason to use the mirror because since it is flat across its entire surface it makes this electronic gizmo here useless because there's no highs and lows to account for to compensate for so logically if you start with a flat surface then all you have to do is tram the bed properly using the paper feeler gauge right there and you will essentially uh, manually human touch not CR touch or BL touch it's human touch you can literally within you know three or four minutes tram the bed and start printing right away you don't have to do any uh, g-code test prints and all that crap because if you do the test prints for whatever reason you think it's helping now you have to remove all that crap from the bed itself before you even start a print so I would say trust your tramming skills start the print right away and then you're good to go okay try it see what happens so we're going to go down here look at the springs these are as you see right here standard everyday run-of-the-mill springs that came with the printer uh, I can verify it if you want want me to that those are what came with the printer this is what came with the printer the uh, extruder is what came with the printer okay no issues there uh, again people say oh you're gonna have it's a ticking time bomb you can have all kinds of problems really if you look at aftermarket extruders, what kind of problems they are having, you know, with E-step changes, with gear changes, with all the problems they have, that this extruder right here will never have, okay? The only thing you might be aware of is if that arm ever breaks, cracks, or whatever, just replace the arm. Don't replace the whole damn thing because then you're going to open yourself up to who knows what. So just leave the plastic one there. You can see it's working. No problems exist. Nothing's cropping up that there's a problem. So you keep the body, change the arm, okay? Then you change the arm and you print for another two and a half, three years, okay? If that cracked right now, man, bottom line, you know, without a, without a hesitation, I just replace that arm. It takes like, you know, three bucks, five minutes, and you're done. That's it. It's, it's, that's how it's done. All right, so there you go. This is the full Ender 3 as it came out of the box. Uh, my Ender 3 Pro looks exactly the same. Everything's exactly the same. The only difference is because in the box it comes with a little bit wider center uh, thing here, uh, center shaft. Uh, but again, everything else is identical. We have a level gantry here, level with the frame. And if this frame ever moves up and down, people say, oh, you got to adjust the eccentric nuts. That'll do it. Yeah, but you'll still have the original problem. The original problem is these two screws right here. There's two screws that hold this gantry to this bracket. People say, oh, if you just tighten this up, you'll alle alleviate that motion. Yeah, but you still have this problem over here. And now you've increased binding over here. So now, yeah, you got two problems because someone said, go ahead and tighten up the eccentric nuts here so that doesn't move. Yeah, yeah, go for it. All right.
So don't tighten the eccentric nuts to alleviate this. Tighten the two screws. Make sure it's uh, 90 degrees with the frame. Tighten them up firmly. Put it back together. And just firm up these uh, the wheels over here, the eccentric nuts. Just so that 